A few days ago, poor widdly little baby Neil Drunkman announced that The Last of Us 2 has gone gold. More like this game has gone to SJW woke trash. He should have really announced that The Last of Us 2 is gonna sink harder than Joel's face after getting that people's elbow from She-Man herself, Senator Abby Strong. And speaking of that freak, that dude slash chick should have used a driver and not a putter. Neil Kuckman, how many times do I have to teach you this lesson, old man? You're not making a very realistic golf game, sir. Anyway, Neil Druckmann made it seem that going gold means that they sold any copies. What he means by going gold is he took a, he took a paintbrush and painted a giant swirly turd gold and then called it The Last of Us Part 2. This video he made, by the way, came off as incredibly condescending, low energy, and he sounded so fake. It was a Hail Mary damage control attempt to try and persuade people into buying this trash. But unfortunately, based on the leaks, nobody trusts a single word that comes out of yours or that witches Anita Sarkeesian's mouth. Neil Druckmann couldn't handle any criticism on his piss poor writing ability that he started copyright striking anyone who gave an opinion on The Last of Us Part 2, including myself. Those idiots at Naughty Dog think that making fans turn into enemies will end up well for them. Just look at Fallout 76 or look at Battlefield 5. Those games still haven't recovered from that pathetic, epic, unethical business practices they used. And what's even more pathetic is him thinking that he wrote The Last of Us Part 2, thinking it would be liked by the masses. That's even more delusional. Let's actually talk about Naughty Dog here for a second. The so-called masters of storytelling fired Amy Hennig, who was responsible for their success in the first place. She wrote and co-directed Uncharted 1 to 3, and then they fired her. And instead, Neil Druckmann took notes from Anita Sarkeesian, whose involvement included, let me see, in identity politics, flagging channels, and changing female models into manly women. Yeah, we have her to thank for that abomination. Subverting expectations is becoming the cancer of modern storytelling. And the only story worth telling is concerning the hack job known as Naughty Dog. I want to know all of their back office drama. I want to know how they murdered a beloved franchise and treated their employees like garbage and destroyed their once respected name. In The Last of Us Part 1, Joel killed a nameless NPC who was no more than an obstacle for your character to remove. Then in The Last of Us Part 2, that was completely retconned into a position of importance, which is just cheap writing in my opinion. Then again, what do you expect from Anita Sarkeesian and her dog Neil Druckmann? One thing is for sure, I will never buy a game from a developer that hired Anita Sarkeesian for input. I hope The Last of Us 2 fails and the collapse of Naughty Dog serves as a warning for any developer thinking about shoving their disgusting political agendas into a game. And if there is a silver lining, you can call it a soy lining, I hope it brings to light to the fact that Anita Sarkeesian is the most despised person in gaming, and allowing her near their product is a literal death sentence. Look, in my head canon, I'm pretending that Joel and Ellie lived happily ever after, and on that bombshell, hit that subscribe button for more Last of Us 2 coverage. Thank you for watching, Manix out.